North American Finals for Dragon Ball Fusion World is just around the corner. And with that, we also have the release of FB04. It's gonna be a brand new landscape and we're still not really sure where the meta is gonna land. With that said though, we've had a few early tournaments and with that, some testing that has put us in a position to understand what the strongest leaders are going to be and kind of what the meta is gonna start looking like. I don't wanna do an off right tier list right away because I feel like we just don't have enough information. I understand they're free views and everyone is doing them, but I think it's better to talk about the things that I expect to do well than do a full on analysis of a meta that realistically we just haven't had enough data to really be able to say one way or another. I think it's much easier to say, hey, these are the leaders that are going to do well. These are the leaders that are going to top and then kind of take the conversation from there post Nats as we lead towards what we're going to see for the world championships. Before we jump into the leaders that I suspect will be topping this tournament, let's talk about a few omissions that I will not be including. The first of which being Halo Coup. I think the deck is plenty fine and it really found it paces at the end of the FBO3 format being figuring out what the ratios are and it did get new tools in the form of things like Videl and how that all plays into you just having much more recursion and a few more explosive plays but because of the new shape of the meta I feel like we're back to where we were at the start of FBO3 given how much the deck needs to spin its tires to get what it wants to do online I think we're just back into the scenario where we need to figure out ratios figure out what the deck really wants to do how much do you want to lean into just being a Videl style deck versus how much do you want to lean on the blue good stuff deck and what really makes the most sense given that we're going into a much more aggressive heavy format so with that in mind i do think that decks that are a little bit more big brained in how they want to execute their game plan are just going to take a little bit more time to figure out where their place is in the meta versus you know the week one meta of a brand new format i also expect yellow vegeta to not to do phenomenal it's one of those decks that is very much reliant on a good Swiss RNG and expecting to not see your tough matchups while also being able to balance the aggressiveness of the black decks that we're seeing in FBO4 is not an easy task. I think the deck is strong. I think the deck is can win, but it's one of those things where hopefully you don't end up seeing a Jiren or a Daimogoku or something like that in your Swiss run because those strategies can really shut down a lot of what you're doing. So with that in mind, I'm not feeling great about it as much as I love Vegeta as a deck. And then finally, leaning into the Vegeta's more green Vegeta, brand new strategy, very explosive. Some have called it like the green variant of Topku, which I don't know if it's all that, but it is a strong, powerful deck. It is an aggressive deck. This is one of those ones where I'm feeling iffy, not including. The data isn't there to say that it's performing, but that could be people holding their deck list close to the chest. And I know some very good players who are very high on the list. So this one is very much leaning more into it could top. I wouldn't be surprised if it topped. It's a brand new leader. And of course, anything that's new will have a leg up because some players will just be untested and not understand specific matchups. I know some people this week who have said we haven't even tested black yet. And if you're going into this meta not having tested against black, you are not going to have a good time. With those special mentions out of the way, though, let's jump into the decks that will top the Dragon Ball Fusion World North American Finals. Kick it off with the leaders that have been a part of our game from previous sets, Androids. No surprise there. The deck is incredibly strong and it still gets to do what it does even more consistently. They now have a brand new one drop searcher that is also an Android. And as much as this seems like kind of whatever levels of support, it makes a big deal in regards to the deck's consistency to be able to get Androids in the drop. Now you're not relying on Earthlings or Saints to kind of be able to do the same thing. The, the little consistency add to what was arguably the most consistent deck of the previous format says a lot. The deck can swarm incredibly well with a bunch of 20Ks like it was able to do previous set. And it's able to start pushing out bombs like the double strikers and the brolies and the ability to be able to do that is still incredibly strong the deck's not going anywhere and it's the fact that every single game androids will be able to do what androids do best and by being able to do so have the consistency to place a number of decks in top cut shifting over jiren jiren somehow in a blue heavy meta always able to find results and the deck only gets better this is one of those decks that Similar to Halo Coup, took a while for it to kind of find its holdings, but 
two things really much push it towards the direction of me feeling strongly that it will be a top cut placement deck. The first of which is the new support. Now you're no longer in a position where you can only get the benefit of your leader's draw two ability via only a defensive play with your four drop Jirens. If you're facing a deck that you want to be more proactive against, you now have the ability to topo and aggressively draw you two cards and apply pressure. And now there's the massive six drop that once you get it down, you will never be able to be double striked out of that game. So it's just a bunch of different additions to the deck that really make it tough for decks to be able to press against you. And then finally, your 25k leader. And we're going into what I suspect being a very aggressive format the black decks are no joke we've got the yellow decks that are more aggressive than ever and we've got red decks that can apply a lot of pressure as well so the fact that your 25k leader you know if you end up using things like top arena or just mitigating your defenses really well early in the game uh, you're in a much better position to be able to stave off a lot of that offense and then finally to close off the trio from fb03 blue vegeta will continue to be a powerful deck because it's a deck that just does what it does the fact that you have a 35k leader in a position where you're low on resources Sources will just win you games and I'm not surprised if we continue to see the deck be able to do well on that front I don't expect that many changes from what the deck was doing in previous formats but nevertheless it's still plenty strong enough in my opinion to be able to close out there's a brand new secret rare I don't know how much that really impacts the deck but it's now a six drop bomb which being in that six drop slot does make it harder for other decks to be able to remove it uh, and there are new tools now to be able to reduce cost as well on the board, which can impact how powerful things like your four drop Gohan and other such cards are. So uh, I still believe that this deck is in a position to be able to do well uh, and will continue to do so. And then finally, a last throwback from our previous formats. Uh, I'm just going to call this the, the mid-range black deck is between Bardock and Goku GT. I suspect some number of both of these leaders to go in there. Uh, the reason I'm saying kind of grouping these two together is because they're very much often the same deck and that same deck doesn't really change all that much going into the next format. Bardock is a little bit more consistent and less reliant on its deck because it's a 25k lead that can scry, so you have a little bit more consistency there. But then Goku has really good matchups into things like red because you're able to buff up your battle cards and you're able to make like two drops into real threats. So just generally the mid-range black strategy that are running like 90% of the same cards. And I do think distinctify themselves much differently from what Baby is trying to do. A little foreshadowing there for you. Either way, the deck's really strong and not, some people are going to be untested and understanding how to play around dealing with the two drop trunks that they just got. So if they're able to tempo out the trunks into the four drop and then you're able to hold off for one turn, that game runs away really, really quickly. And you still have those great toolbox tools like two drop pan if you're facing against a Jiren deck that's kind of sitting on their four drop or anything of the sort. So I think I think those decks are very much positioned to do incredibly well. Uh, Bardock's just really consistent. Goku just has a good tool in terms of of his leader ability to be able to make it hard for your opponent to remove your board and i think is situated to do decently well moving on over to the new leaders and daima goku positions himself as the premium generic red leader uh, the deck does some really solid things in terms of being able to nick things off the board keep your opponent off of board a uh, combo with cards that allow you to draw cards like the, the promo goku that would draw if it's like if you see a 30k on board like there's just there's enough synergies in there that i feel like it really pushes red to be where it wants to be generically the red card pool is arguably the strongest generic card pool in the entire game which is why things like starter coup was always viable and to this day starter coup is still viable because the red cards in the deck are able to carry so much of that workload and it's just gotten better with set four but you add on top of that a leader that kind of leans more into the proactive components of what starter deck goku was doing previously now with daimaku i think you're just in such a good position to be able to punish your opponents who don't have that strength in mid-ranger matchups you know if you're one of those players who's able to crunch out the five or 10k combo differences you know across three or four or five turns this is where decks like Daima will really start to see their dividends pay off and I expect some number of this leader to be able to do well on top. And now we're leaning into the things that really make this format what I feel much more aggressive. Super Boo is a deck that I think is going to do well. I do think it has the same caveats in that Yellow Vegeta had. I think you need some good Swiss RNG. And I do believe that if you're able to fade Jiren's in your matchups, I think you're going to be in a good position to top. The deck is aggressive. It's hard to understand how to play against it. And I think that's the biggest caveat. 
Some players are just going to play default fusion world, attack your leader, put you in a position where you can awaken, and then get your combo of three drop Bobby into boo, force your opponent to discard two cards, aggro, 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 and then they're out of the game. You big wombo combo them with your double striker, and that's like five different swings plus double strike swings plus leader swings. So effectively, you can put your opponent in a really uncomfortable position, especially if they don't know what's going on. And I think that's one of the strengths of this first week format. Players aren't going to know what's going on. They're not going to understand the best ways to be able to mitigate certain matchups. And I think specifically with how much Boo kind of doesn't care what you're doing, unless you're doing very specifically four drop cheering things, is going to put them in a really good position to take advantage of that and punish opponents who don't understand the matchup. And because of that, I do suspect one, maybe two players slip their ways into top cut with this deck. And then finally, Baby and Here's a little spoiler for you guys. I think Baby's going to take it all. The deck's incredibly solid. It can play a little bit slower to the ground if it needs to, but very much will always be in a position to threaten your opponent with six, seven different attacks from an empty board. Presuming your opponent is not able to deal with what you have on board, let's say you play a four draw Baby and they're not able to get rid of it, and then you're able to follow up those plays with Rildo plays and stuff like that. The deck is explosive. The deck feels very close to what a master's deck in fusion world feels like in terms of the amount of bodies it can dish out the attack sequences it has uh and the only thing that's really missing is a certain level of consistency to really make the difference but nevertheless i think a lot of people aren't respecting what baby does enough and baby positions itself as a really solid deck into a lot of what the other top decks are you know you punch androids in the mouth that's gonna be really tough for them to come back uh, against jiren even though jiren is a better defensive deck all your attacks swing for 25 so while it is easier for jiren to defend defensively than a lot of other leaders the fact that because you have to combo to get your chains over meaning you're always swinging for at least 25 means that you are in a position to be able to have game against anything and i think while there may be cracks in that armor for other decks to be able to take advantage of against baby i don't think they're going to exist in week one and we have to remember with the week one meta there's a lot of places where aggro will always be advantage because it doesn't care about what you're doing and then to follow up people just don't know what to tech against or what those techs are or specifically what the field is looking like and when you're a deck that does not care about what your opponent is doing you can take massive advantage of that opportunity and push it for some big wins that said though i could be wrong i think a lot of people are green vegeta believers who might be a little bit upset that he's kind of like in my honorable mentions list but nevertheless this is what i feel is going to top Dragon Ball Fusion World North American Finals. If you guys disagree, let me know in the comments, guys. Talk about what your favorite leaders are for this format and what you guys suspect will take a top cut or win finish this weekend. And with that, I'll catch you guys on the next one.